Now, I have been out every hour that God made, and I have never seen anything in the line of a ghost or anything like that. And I'm 71 years old, and I've been around for quite a while, but I have never seen anything. But a strange thing happened one time. It was really strange to me. There was a mission in Lenan, and Sally Nappy, a neighbor who lived three miles down the road and across the river, and she would, in a, in a little house right on the, uh, on the side of the Erif River, and to get over, she used to come over in a boat and come up on the Riley's house, and then she would walk up and tie the boat on this side. There were stepping stones that you could use too, if the flood wasn't too high. But anyways, she was coming to the mission. And she walked up, no car, no nothing, just three miles of a walk for an, a woman that was getting old. So she came up anyway until she got to the bridge, the, the gate going into Ashley Lodge. And the woman was feeling bad. And the next thing was, she dropped on the road and she lay there. Now, Michael Farty, that lived on the other side of the bay where Parry Kine lives now, right across from Paddy's, there's a house there. Michael Farty used to live in Parry Kine's house in the olden days. And he was going to the mission. And Michael was coming up and Michael used to walk very fast in his young days, so much so that he was called electric legs. Electric legs. He was so fast. He was always in a jog trot, never walked like a regular guy. Michael was always in his shot, like thin and hardy, and as honest and as straight as the sun, and as strong as a horse. That was Michael Fabry. What a, a perfect gentleman. But um, poor Michael, I had great respect for him. And uh, good stonemason too. But anyways, uh, Michael was coming to the mission and he came up his road and then he looked down the Westport Road to see if there was anybody coming that he could be out to the church with. And there was nobody coming, but he could see this black thing below at the, at the gate going into the lodge and I look it down like he knew it wasn't an animal. So he went down and he, who was in it but Sally? Poor Sally, Sally Nappy. Sally Nappy. Her son, her son was known as Lamb Joyce. She was Mrs. Joyce. And her son was known as Michael Lamb Joyce because Michael was a tall man. How about you, six one two or something? So he was called Land Joyce, because there's a whole slew of other Joyces up the village. There were shorter guys. They had some other kind of a name, following their father's name. But anyway, Michael went down to Sally, and he saw that Sally was in rough shape. So he took to the scrapers and he ran up to my mother. And we were a good quarter of a mile up from there. And he ran up to my mother and he told her that Sally was in bed. Sally was dying. So I was out in the field and mother blew a whistle and I came in running. And by the time I come in, ran over for I was working over in Baines's, place we used to call Baines's. And uh, she had sent Paddy for the priest. There was a mission in Lenin at the time. And uh, Paddy went out at the school before you get to the church. Here was the missionaries walking on the road. So he told them. So anyways, they got a car and it was under. They went down and uh, they took care of Sally on the road. And then the doctor was called and she was taken home and brought over across in the boat. And the woman died. So anyway, she was brought 
I know I went to her wake and I had that like I was the first time I was ever in her house. Uh, my father wasn't at home, so I was the eldest son, so you do that job. So I went to the wake and I went across the boat and there was a, a roaring fire down there was roasting ox. And a few of the Leanland lads, they decided they would cross on the stepping stones. And that was a mistake for them, as poor Martin found out. Because and they all made it except poor Martin, but Martin missed his step. And he went down, and he was soaked. But when he went into the house, he didn't worry about it, because he sat in front of the fire quite close. And she thought next thing was there was steam all over the place, Martian drying out. So when he got dried out on the back, he turned round and he dried out on the front. And in no time, Martian was as dry as anybody. And he didn't get cold out of it either. No need for penicillin or any kind of cough medicine. Oh, we were young and happy in those days, you could take it. But anyway, Sally was brought to the, uh, she was waked in her house, and I was at it, and in the next evening, Sally was brought up to the church, and she was left in the church at six o'clock, and from a mass the next morning, she would, would be buried. I had gone out to Lena that night, and when I was coming in, I was walking, I didn't have a bike that night, I was walking. And um, oh, the night was dry, and not too dark, but uh, it was dry. And, but there was a terrific wind blowing me from the blowing me in towards in home away from Lena. So um, when I was coming up by the church. Now, now, nothing could have stayed on the road in the line of leaves or anything like that. Get it, we'd blown to kingdom come. But when I was coming up near the church, those leaves, like a bunch of leaves scratching along the road, and they, went, they were blown away up, even though there was no wind there, there was no weaves, the leaves there. But I could hear the noise of them scratching along the road. And as I did, the hair on my head stood up straight. I was a real gallywop, but my hair stood on my head, a kind of a fright, you see. And I was coming, as I was coming along, I was kind of running in front of the wind, the wind was carrying me, and all of a sudden, the wind stopped, just as I got to the church, the wind stopped, but the, the leaves kept on running up the road. Even though there was no leaves there, I could hear that sound of them. So my hair stood on my head, and I just stood there on the road, and I said, The Lord to mercy, I knew Sally. Because she was inside in the church in her coffin. And I went on my way. And the wind took up again, and it blew me home. I went home in a jog trot with the wind in my back. But what made the leaves make noise on the road? Why, right out in front of the church. See? So things. Funny thing, that was the only thing that ever made me think that there might be some kind of ghost around. That was the only thing. I'd been out every hour God made, never saw anything. Until that night, I felt it. <laughs>